Hey there. Before we begin today's episode in honor of Red Ribbon reviewers, I want to tell you a little bit about Project Hope. Project Hope is a worldwide organization that helps local healthcare workers to save those who need help the most around the world. When disaster strikes, they respond. They empower healthcare workers without the belief of one-size-fits-all solutions. They seek to unite humanitarians to bring lasting change and prioritize compliance, accountability, and transparency in everything they do. They have been around since 1958, with the first peacetime hospital ship, the SS Hope, and they have been constantly adapting to look forward to any future health challenges around the globe. If you wish to know more about Project Hope or make a donation, visit their website at projecthope.org. And now, with that said, on with the comedy. Ho ho ho! Hello, everybody! episode of my very first web series, Vaulting. It's a pleasure that you're here. <laughs> oh, brother. Fifteen years ago, I made Vaulting just out of pure boredom. Not to break the mold, or for fame and fortune. Just something to do for fun. And man, so much has changed since then. And yet, I still remain the same nostalgic archivist that tries to provide unto you movies and TV shows that few have heard of, or you might have, and quite possibly forgotten about them. Even if it was just released a few months ago, but regardless, strangely enough, every five years I seem to cover something stop-motion anime related. As you can say, I have an appreciation for the art form, given so few actually kind of use it, but just for this 15th anniversary themed episode, I've decided to look at a particular form of stop motion that I've been meaning to spotlight for some time. It's not just moving figures or John Cordy's Lumage. It's something truly special. Claymation. Ever since my discussion on the PJs, I've always wanted to spotlight Will Vinton, given how different his work is compared to other animators. Along with college roommate Bob Gardner, him and Vinton perfected a new form of stop motion that involved all the figures and sets to be made out of clay. After success with their first short, Closed Mondays, which won an Academy Award for Best Short, Vinton would utilize this then-new animation technique for a variety of shorts and special effects work towards various projects. The 1980s was a pure golden era for Vinton and Claymation. Nowhere near was that more clear than 1987's Claymation Christmas Celebration, a half-hour special that presented a string of animated vignettes based on timeless Christmas carols, but done in a way where each one stands out from each other. There could be some that are comedic in nature, while others go for more heartfelt execution. It won a primetime Emmy for Outstanding Animated Program, got a lot of airplay in CBS as well as syndication on places like the Disney Channel, and we're here to see just why many fondly remember this one so well and why it deserves not to be overlooked. The way the idea for this special came around was that Will Vinton wanted to do something akin to Disney's Fantasia, but a little more mainstream. Instead of using contemporary Christmas songs, they decided to go with traditional ones that people knew pretty well, and see exactly how they could be presented visually. The best example to start with to give the idea is the first segment on We Three Kings. This one is more character-based, with the song starting off with three wise men singing about what gifts they carry and plan to give to the baby Jesus. Gold I bring to crown him again Incense on the deity eye And you can have my bottle of aftershave. It's called Grr. <laughs> Gold, Frankenstein, and Grr. 
But as the song plays out... Star of wonder, star of night, star, star with royal beauty bright. Oh, they're in Ishtar. Toto, I have a feeling this isn't the Red Onion. This perfectly cements what to expect about the whole special by taking tradition and giving it a unique spin to it. Sure, they could have done the whole song with characters of the wise men, but this is the 1980s. So let's have a doo-wop group of camels to mess with tradition. For me personally, I kind of liked it better when Sesame Street did a similar take when they were parodying Fine Young Cannibals. Live from the Mojave Desert, it's the Fine Young Camel with their greatest and only hit ever. She drives me crazy. She, she, like a little around town. She, she, she drives me crazy. I can't calm myself down. I kid, I kid, but I will admit, this opening segment is a great way to give people a taste of what to expect and unexpect. I also really dig their take on Carol of the Bells as a group of anthropomorphic bells are led by a hunchback maestro that might as well be Quasimodo. Would that make it a quasi-maestro? Nah. There's a lot of character animation, especially in the expressions when Quasi is annoyed by one of the bells that is too distracted to perform on cue. Uh, and I like how each bell is distinguished from the other in terms of look and body language. And I guess a lot of people enjoyed this one, as Will Vinton said this segment would see life beyond this special as the theatrical short. Claymation Christmas is also used as a means to explore different techniques for later productions. During O oh Christmas Tree, we zoom in on a decorated tree and enter into an ornament that goes right into another room, and so forth and so forth. Would that make it a... Christmas tree-ception? No, it's... not got a good ring to it. Vinton wanted to use this as an excuse to do more complex camera zooms and have the piece be one big cosmic zoom with extra camera moves here and there. It's a complex piece on its own given the amount of patience they had to do with the camera work and going from one set to another. Another segment that relies on presentation of technique is a stained glass window of a church coming to life during Joy to the World. This segment is interesting for using the art of clay paint, which was all done on glass with some rear lighting. It's a very effective piece with how the image keeps morphing from one thing to the next. The imagery alone is very subtle, and it complements the lyrics very nicely, making for a standout moment based on its own visuals. According to Will Vinton, this animation style was actually influenced by the work of Joan C. Kratz, who did a similar animation style of clay painting with continuous morphing. Watching this segment alone, I'm still taken back by how this is all made of clay. You could swear it was a watercolor painting that was coming to life. But the use of clay adds more depth and dimension to the images that pop out. If I did have to pick a favorite segment, it would easily be Angels We Have Heard on High, but set to Ice Skating Walruses. This segment uses the song as an instrumental, but it effectively works given the lighthearted comedy. Will Vinton saw this as their own Dance of the Hours piece, and it's really hilarious. Anyone I talk to about this Christmas special will immediately single this one out as their favorite moment, and I can see why. There's a lot of unique stretch and squash quality in the character animation that makes for some hilarious beats, like when the walruses ram into the penguins like bowling pins. There's something genuinely sweet with these two ice skating, but simultaneously running over these arctic birds that get some solid laughs. <laughs> I swear, I could watch this for hours and never tire of the over-exaggerated expressions and Looney Tunes-style slapstick. I'm a dead sucker for stuff like this. Of course, it's not a claymation Christmas of the California Raisins who do a sweet Motown rendition of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The idea behind this segment was to do a small music video-style scene, but with the famous fruit mascots. It's both comedic and heartfelt seeing the Raisins sing the song, while also making their own Santa and Reindeer Sleigh team after missing out on a bus. I know I should talk about the creation of these guys for another video, but I'm certain there are some folks out there who have no idea who these beings are. 
The California Raisins were a last resort advertising campaign idea by the California Raisin Advisory Board, who had zero faith from the start on this. Yet, with the help of Will Vinton's animation, the commercials they made were widely popular to the point the Raisins would branch out into tons of merchandising and solo primetime specials, along with a Saturday morning cartoon. In fact, you can thank this Christmas special for expanding their popularity further, even considering how this had a soundtrack which was released to Atlantic Records, and eventually later they would have the California Raisins do a couple of albums through them too. Their appearance here marked their popularity further, which led to a TV special, and that too also gained a soundtrack through Atlantic Records. I remember when this segment appeared on a Beavis and Butthead special and they commentated on Christmas music videos, and they just kept referring to them as turds for some reason. Would you feel bad about flushing a talking turd? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'd say, drown you, fecal matter. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Those giraffes are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the turds better, though. And yet, this is still kind of complimentary compared to what The Simpsons did to them later. And now, we return to the 1986 holiday classic, Christmas with the California Prunes. The stars are sweetly wrinkled. This is offensive to Christians and prunes. So Claymation Christmas Celebration is enjoyable enough with a variety of heartfelt and funny segments. The way everything ties together is not overly complex, but sweet enough to work. The special is hosted by two dinosaurs named Rex and Herb, voiced by Johnny Counterfeit and Tim Connor. This would be the first time we have seen these two as they made appearances on before, with a short about dinosaurs and a compilation movie where they donned a Siskel and Ebert style likeness. I hated it. They all look like hippies. No, I give this one a thumbs up. Hey, I wouldn't give these guys a job. They're perhaps a bit dated. But, but nice visual. A stylistic Which mishmash. Which is why I liked it. And I hated it. Their personality carries over here as Rex tries to be traditional and civil, while Herb is more loose and just wants to munch on snacks. Songs about Christmas trees and stacks of gifts, reindeer and jingling bells, holiday ballets, Santa Claus, universal joy, and Christmas snacks. There is not a carol about snacks. There's a running gag where they try to perform the song Here We Come a Wassailing, but different groups of people and animals come in confusing the meaning of wassail. It's a standard miscommunication joke that's used enough of the point, it doesn't tire itself out. Here we come a waffling on a Lisa Green. Here we come a waddling so fair to be seen. Here we come a waddling on a Lisa Green. It's wassailing, I tell you, it's wassailing! I do believe he is waffle. If there was one word to fully describe what makes Claymation Christmas Celebration so enduring, it's one word. Cute. It's very much a short Christmas treat that delivers what it does. It's a fun concept that complements itself with cool animation that many people work their fingers to the bone over. Heck, even this special hired on new assistants that would be apprentices and later work on some other things too. Greg Bartley got his start working on this special way before he joined Nickelodeon to do Hey Arnold and Penny Cartoons for Pee Wee's Playhouse. Just seeing every detail and every prop made of clay still astounds me given how one gets lost in the moment and just forgets they are seeing us as an animated being. I also like how the imagery doesn't hit you over the head with the Christmas imagery. It's just present enough to the point they don't have to elaborate or explain the message of the holiday. It's just there while you get to enjoy some cool stuff. If you're a dead lover for this kind of material, it's a must-watch for certain. Hmm, part of me does want to end the episode here and wish unto many of you a happy holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year, Gung Hei Fat Choi, and Solemn Deesawar to all. Blessings and wishes to you onto this fine, grateful season. But there's a problem. This DVD that carries the Claymation Christmas Celebration also harbors two other holiday specials they produced. 
and it would be pretty wrong of me to not discuss those. <sighs> so instead, here's a nice little tasty holiday themed nostalgia break. And when we come back, we are going to take a look at the character that Will Vinton wanted to make a star out of. His name was Wilshire Pig. And if you don't know who the heck that is, don't worry, you will. Soon. I feel like I want to be feeling. Look at the smile on my lips. I've got that M&M's feeling right at my fingertips. So carefree, they fit in a plan. Milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. You want to grab on to that M&M's feeling. Keebler presents the appealing taste of baked potato skins in a crunchy chip. Potato skins got baked potato appeal Cause they're made with potatoes and skins that are real The Keebler elves make potato skin snack chips with real potatoes and skins Cheddar cheese and bacon, sour cream and chives, tasty baked potato And they finally got barbecue flavor too They're made with potatoes and skins that are real Potato skins for Keebler, baked potato appeal <laughs> Annoyed hates hot quality pizza he loves to make your hot pizza ice cold. <laughs> Call Domino's Pizza and avoid the noise. <laughs> we keep the cold out and all this quality in. So when you want quality pizza hot and delicious, Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. Wednesday. On a special night in time. Please don't be afraid. She can only bring you unhappiness. I would never betray your trust. Beauty and the Beast. Get back. Cut the post-holiday blues loose with Footloose. Saturday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. At the start of the 1990s, animation was experiencing a new resurgence of interest. You had... Walt Disney Studios that were creating some hand-drawn classics that were breaking box office records, Warner Brothers and Amblin creating good quality shows that were highly entertained by kids and adults, and of course you had networks like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network that were breaking new ground in original programming that was highly unthinkable. As you can imagine, Will Vinton also won a cut of that too. And he thought that there was only one way around it to get him on to the same train that everyone was. And he thought it could be possible. With one simple thing. A pig. Before we dive into the next two specials, here's some context. Because the California Raisins licensing was owned by the National Raisin Advisory Board, Witten was provided funds to create the commercials only, and that was it. If he wanted to expand his horizons, Winton felt creating a line of new characters exclusive to the studio would be beneficial. If he wanted to be like Walt Disney, why not make characters that are close to Walt's conception? I, I, I swear, the guy even had plans to make an amusement park called Claymation Station. The original concept was 15 to 20 acres of rides, gift shops, a 3D movie theater, and all located behind Portland Union Station. Portland could become a viable motion picture market. It's, it has a lot of activities here, and it has a lot of things going for it. It's, rad, it's definitely missing facilities in a major way. And it was all riding on these new characters. If Vinton was to go that far, they would have to be special, endearing, and all well around liked by the audience. And before anyone does an internet search on Claymation Station, spoiler alert, it never came to fruition. All of that blame can be put on one Wilshire pig. This guy was arranged to be the studio's new mascot, and he bombed pretty hard. This character alone was mostly cynical, greedy, and had only one thing on his mind. 
The point of amusement rides is not amusement. The point of amusement rides is making money! Hmm, something seems a little off about this character. Let me just do a little read and... Hmm. Despicable Con 1. It's tolerable, but still pretty annoying. The voice work by Michelle Morinan is putting in as much life and effort as she can, despite the unlikable quality of the character. Now, there's characters you love to despise, anti-heroes, and cynical characters that at least show a sense of respect in some way. What makes them interesting is, despite their harsh demeanor, you can sort of sense they kind of care but are afraid to show it. Will Sharp Pig is none of those. He just feels made with this sense of existence with nothing to grasp for. And if we are meant to root for this guy, then what is it to root for when stinginess and appetite for personal gain is really at the root of his being? In short, while Mickey Mouse gave mouse ears for everyone to wear, Wilshire gave plastic pig snouts so the animation crew could wear them. I so wish I was making this up. Nevertheless, CBS commissioned Vinton to do two holiday specials, and he decided to see this as an excuse to launch this character and try to see how the audience would take to him. First up was 1991's Claymation Comedy of Horrors, a Halloween special directed by Barry Bruce, who helmed the Carol the Bell segment from Claymation Christmas Celebration. The most confusing aspect of this special is knowing that it aired in May instead of October, but that's the least of my trouble. The plot involves Wilshire and his friend, a snail named Sheldon, finding a lost journal that belongs to one Victor Frankenswine. <sighs> okay, that name is dumb, but I still snicker. They discover an offer to enter Frankenswine's castle, which leads to choosing either a tote bag or the Doc's all-powerful monster. Much to their surprise, when they head... They discover a monster convention is being held and pose as monsters while trying to find their prize. For the most part, this special does the job fine for half-hour time killer, that is, if you want offbeat set pieces and interesting animation. It's really laid back as we move from one zany character to another, and there's some funny set pieces along the way. I do dig this Bob Hope skeleton that turns out to be one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And then these here are my partners in Apocalypse. There's Pestilence, War, and Danger Stains. However, because the special moves so fast, it does make you wonder how it could have gone if extra beats were added in, or if our main characters meant more monsters. These designs are creative at best, but they don't make much of an impact outside of a funny line exchange or two. Just the two of you this evening? Ah, I believe we have just the table for you. Very cozy. I also find it weird how Wilshire is paired with a neurotic snail of all things, but the voice performances actually do help out here, and I'm kind of a sucker for mixed match pairings like Abbott and Costello. Yet, it does make me wonder if you just replace these two with any other characters, and there is that sense that nothing about this special would change in the slightest. Heck, some small tweaks here and there, and you could have Rex and Herb stumbling in this convention and trying to pose as monsters to avoid being sought out. In fact, why couldn't Rex and Herb be the main faces of Vinton's studio? They've been using a couple of projects and do hold an iconic quality. I can see these two working better as studio mascots, as opposed to a money-grubbing pig and his sidekick, Snail. Although, the special nearly redeems itself in the final six or nine minutes. The monsters figure out these two latest con attendees are alive in a gag that I have to admit is pretty funny and clever. Wilshire? Wilshire Pig? Granny? Oh. I'm really sorry about missing your funeral, sorry. Granny. <laughs> and about the rest home, too. I mean, we just, hey, you know, uh, no money oh, didn't gee. go to waste. Uh, you know? Wait just a minute. You are not dead. One chase scene later, and they discover Frankenswine's lab to discover... Okay, I admit, that is both adorable 
and hilarious. You get some brownie points comedy of horrors, just don't spend them all in one place. It all leads to the discovering of a growth formula that turns Frankenstein's monster into a giant, resulting in... I feel like I could... Climb every mountain, sage high and low... A weird placement for a Roger and Hammerstein song. Given that I'm not quite the Sound of Music fan, I'm gonna take away those brownie points I gave you a couple of seconds ago, special. Oh, no! Of course, the monster is stopped by a device Wilshire attempted earlier, and there's the added twist that they probably should have gone with a tote bag in the end. For the most part, Claymation Comedy of Horrors fits the bill for Halloween special. If you show me a single frame of it, I may be able to say it does have the look of something ghoulish and simple. It's not meant to be anything major, just a small 30-minute treat with cool animation. And while Wilshire is annoying at times, he oddly fits in here. I can only think it's probably due to him being partnered with a character of timid personality that does add a sense of levity to the mean personality, which at least works with the kooky atmosphere. Overall, it's mediocre, but at least it's watchable. Well, I mean, it wasn't terrible. So it wasn't great, but it had some enjoyable moments. I mean, it's not like they went to the lowest common denominator and oh no! Oh lord. They did it. They finally did it. They went to the bottom of the barrel and selected the most easiest of lowest common denominator overly commercialized holidays just to base a special around. Really, Easter, of all the glorious amount of holidays that exist out there, you selected Easter. You could have done something so different. What? Valentine's Day not good enough for you? Did St. Patrick's Day not provide a wealth of material to work from? I can definitely see a couple of ideas from that. Hmm. April Fools, Earth Day, D Day, Independence Day, Juneteenth, Birthday, Arbor Day, Labor Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, Veterans Day. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Solemn Beast Swear, Gung Hei Fat Choy, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, President's Day, Mayday, 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 Okay. Let us be fair here. There are things you can do with Easter, and there have been some good specials based around this holiday. Case in point, it's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown. Uh, Rankin Bass did a couple that were pretty unique. And if you want to go for broke, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did one or two as well. So it's not like it's a complete big loss. <laughs> Let's uh, give it a fair shot. What is the premise? I'll tell you what it is. Awful. This time around, Wilshire Pig plans to kidnap the Easter Bunny and take his place. The reason you ask? Apparently, the Easter Bunny gets offered to do commercialized stuff, but turns it down, feeling it would go against his morals and the holiday. Oh, Easter isn't about money. It's about springtime, families, picnics, Easter egg hunts, um, plastic grass. I think that says it all. Number one, way to force in a tiny bit of commentary that goes absolutely nowhere. Number two, I understand they're doing this special for fun, but small jabs at the commercialization of a holiday and all while doing it under a commercialized holiday special feels somewhat hypocritical. Yeah, something like Ernest Saves Christmas had a Christian bumper sticker present, but that was only a quick glimpse. Number three, a little bit of a nitpick. If the Easter Bunny is turning down all these offers to do commercials for a variety of things, I ask unto you, who do they have to fill in the bunny ears? <laughs> Question answered. Thus, Wilshire vacuums the holiday icon and 
admittedly a well-animated scene, complete with home destruction, and apparently with the Easter Bunny missing, some kind of contest is set to be held in order to determine the new Easter Bunny. Uh, it's said to be some kind of honor tradition. It's at least my trouble, so just go with it, kids. And thus a majority of the special is filled with scene after scene with Will Shire posing as a wannabe bunny furry, and enlists the help of a bunny psychiatrist named Spike to understand how to be like the Easter Bunny. You say you feel like a rabbi trapped in a pig's body. No! A rabbit! A rabbit in a pig's body! Now, I gotta love how Wilshire owns a book of holiday traditions, and yet he seeks the help of a bunny psychiatrist to learn the ways of an Easter bunny. Logical sense? What's that? We need about six minutes of material to pad out the running time here. The scenes where Wilshire is in training is kind of funny, given the nods to Peter Rabbit and the Chuck Jones-style humor where the pork has to cross the road and gets run over constantly, but that's really it. I remind, this guy kidnapped the Easter Bunny for malicious profit and gain. Heck, he eventually imprisons Spike once he finds out what Wilshire is up to, and just when you think things could not get any darker... After tomorrow, I will be the new Easter Pig! Too much douchebaggery. It's official. We have entered Despicable Con 3. I repeat, Despicable Con 3. Um. Waffle? No time for snacks, Bobcat. We've officially entered Despicable Con 3. Hmm. Despicable Con 3? That's the worst kind. And for the hell, folks, the pork has gone rogue. <laughs> This is exactly why we can't have nice things. May I remind you, who does the funding around here lends you the equipment, and above all, this is what I get. Every single little piece that gets destroyed is not a pretty penny to spare for. But no, you loony loofers don't understand. This is about as delicate as your grandmother. Don't worry, I know the risks. Just be glad the check's in the mail. <laughs> Say, Digit, did you remember to switch on the technical difficulties feed before repairing? For some reason, I'm getting a notification that says we're in broadcast mode right now. Ah. Uh... I remind you, this was set to be the face of one of many mascots that was to be the head of Will Vinton Studios. I can already see the marketing now. Come on down to Will Vinton Studios and see the laborious process of our stop motion animation. While you're there, pick up a t-shirt of everyone's favorite greedy slab of bacon, Wilshire Pig. All Wilshire Pig shirts are currently 90% off. That's right, 90% off. Don't delay. This deal is currently going on for an eternity. Until we sell out our entire warehouse stock of Wilshire Pig shirts. Yeah, that's right. We really banked on this ham, so help us to help you. Bottom line, if you want to create a character that is said to be likable and respectable unto your audiences, well... You gotta make us give them a reason to care for, or at least a reason to connect and root for. It's one thing to have them do mean, harsh, and despicable things, but you still gotta give us a purpose to accept and understand his actions. To counter, look at Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. He's curious, mischievous, yet we understand his reason for why he wants to do something different, having become tired of Halloween frights. We know what Jack is doing is wrong in taking over Christmas, but can't help to share his insight to see if his plight will work. We know he means well, but he's not doing it for malicious purposes. 
Hell, when things go wrong, he tries to set them right, and even takes responsibility, like apologizing to Santa for his actions. Forgive me, Mr. Claus. I'm afraid I've made a terrible mess of your holiday. This is a timeless character who is likable and iconic for his simplicity and depth. And truly all the more ironic given that Henry Selleck directed vehicle and Tim Burton produced feature was delivered unto audiences one year after this thing aired. Here, Wilshire Pig is just an ass. There's no other way to say it without sounding like a broken record. It's odd to see him forefronted as the main character. If they really wanted to make this work, why not do something like have the Easter Bunny get injured and Wilshire decides to take over while still keeping his greedy ways? Yeah, the crocus hand would still be a dick, but it at least would level off some of the evil here. It would make later scenes more engaging when he enters the contest, which on their own and out of context are kind of funny, like trying to hatch a reluctant chicken. Go away, I don't want any. Come out of your shell, you little dweeb. Hey, leave me alone! I'm incubating! And trying to cross the road. Well, okay, not all of them are funny. It was a weird scene where he has to demonstrate his egg-giving technique, and he does so with a Volkswagen Transformer bot that shoots out eggs set to the song Lowrider. Alright. I can let all of that weird imagery slide if it wasn't for one tiny thing. The song choice. It's just way too funky for this kind of thing. But ooh, he's riding a mechanical transformer lowrider! So using the song lowrider makes it funny! No, it does not. It just makes it out of place. I mean, couldn't they have used something like Beastie Boys? You gotta fight for your right to party. Or, given the punk Roman helmet uh, Wilshire Dawns, maybe something by D. Snyder would have worked. Can't go wrong with ACDC. Or, if you want to really go for broke, why not Queen? No, 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 I, I take that last one back. Queen's a little too good for this. How else do you follow up with that bit of artistically bankrupt crap? By having Doc Rabbit and the Easter Bunny get swallowed by a shark, and their only way out is to make it upset. Please release me, let me go. By crooning a song written by Eddie Miller and Robert Young, so that way the shark's feelings and stomach will be upset. And once our side characters escape, I emphasize side characters. How does this all get resolved? No. No. Watch out for Ooh. Dum 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 da dum 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 da dum dum clay. Nation Easter is so dumb, too stupid for me! <sighs> then again... I can't really go Mad Morgan all over a crummy Easter special that's just lame and artistically bankrupt. And that's the best way to describe this one. Artistically bankrupt. Any sense of creativity is just wasted on launching a flawed character that is not even good enough to be any kind of mascot.
Heck, when things go right at the end, the focus is more on the Easter Bunny and the side characters. So why are we watching this guy, and why should we even care about him when he's this unlikable? I don't even think this special got much airtime beyond its premiere, and most folks are pretty split on this one. And what exactly did Claymation Easter gain to its fame? Two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation and Outstanding Animated Program, beating out nominees Ren and Stimpy, Shelley Duvall's Bedtime Stories, and The Simpsons episode Radio Bart? <laughs> what? A really good Simpsons episode that guest starred Sting? Got beaten out of the Emmys by a crummy and overly commercialized stop-motion Easter special? Just a sick world we're living in! Sick people! When does the hurting stop? In addition, according to the documentary Clay Dreams, a lot of the animators at Vin Studios started to leave for a variety of reasons. Among them being not given enough credit, but the biggest one was that Will Sharpig and the batch of new characters were ones they didn't want to work on. Will Sharpig and the licensable characters weren't that interesting to the animators. We're talking animals. Warner Brothers and Disney covered that pretty thoroughly. Is there something else we could do? People just stopped giving a shit because they were so disenchanted with what was going on. Bad enough you've made some TV specials that are not really good, but when you have an unlikable character that's so bad to the point the animators just up and leave? Damn. Give Jim Henson some credit, at least he tried with the Gorch Muppets. When you create something out of love, it will be felt with your viewers. Something made from pure cynicalism will just feel sour and unappreciated. That's how I feel about these claymation specials. You have one made from pure passion and fun, another that doesn't quite work, yet there are some aspects that do help it stand out, and one that goes way off the rails and just feels crafted as some form of mandate requirement. If there was one positive I did have to give that carries throughout all three of them, is how they offer unique and creative animation. Every character and every bit of the set is made from pure clay. Yeah, some of the later specials use different backgrounds, but others like Christmas and Halloween don't remove themselves from the appreciation of the style given everything is animated in clay. It's a no-brainer Claymation Christmas Celebration is the winner of the three, but I can't say the other two offer nothing. I had my issues with them, but they're well animated, and there was a joke or two that I did get a chuckle out of. I'm glad I saw them, and it was nice to look back at a bygone time when the sky was the limit for Will Vinton, and the possibilities of his stop-motion clay creations were joyfully endless. Not only do I recommend picking up the DVD that accompanies all three specials, even if one or two of them are not really, really good, it's still nice to hear Will Vinton's audio commentary detailing how they made Claymation Christmas Celebration. As a bonus, I recommend for you to seek out the documentary Clay Dream. Owning this Blu-ray is a must-own for any collector. Not only do you have a solid documentary going to the time and legacy of Will Vinton's work, but a massive collection of the shorts he worked on, and they are beautifully restored. Stuff like Little Prince, Closed Mondays, The Great Cognito, and so forth have never looked this good. Don't just see the documentary, own it! Trust me. Even if you're not a collector of physical media, this is one that cannot be passed up. Speaking of which, even though Will Vinton never got his time in the spotlight as he wanted to, it's still nice to see he's being recognized for the work that he did in his lifetime. He created so many unique characters, so many inspiring visuals that they're just unforgettable. And to see the lasting legacy he lived on and inspiring so many others, it's nice to see him stand out among the many. Now we have those that are not trying to imitate his work, but being inspired by what he has done. And so many characters that have morphed into many different things and have worked their way from the small to the big screen and into our hearts. You remember Mark Twain, the California Raisins, and all of them, not just because of their existence, but because of the heart and soul that lied more than just the way the character was written, but 
by how they were performed and beautifully animated. And we all have to thank Vinton for that. What Ray Harryhausen did to ILM, Will Vinton did to many other inspiring animators out there still trying to break new ground to this day. So, with that, I close out this episode by simply saying this. No matter what holiday you spend, or how it is, as long as it's with plenty of heart, soul, effort, and goodwill, you'll be a bright one for certain. I say unto you, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Good, good tidings to anyone celebrating Kwanzaa. And until then, merry and happy holiday to one and all. And I hope to see you the next year. We got two more episodes down, and I promise they're going to be worth it. See you on the next upload, everyone. And have a merry holiday to everyone. Oh. And as for Wilshire Pig, well... <laughs> I do love me some holiday ham steak. Godzilla Final Wars. Saraba, Gojira. Christmas! Now that I like!